guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Phillips here, and welcome back to the Inuyasha Vlogs. I should point out I'm low on battery, so if this has to change out, I apologize. But today we're talking about uh, three episodes, uh, two of which are just uh, padded, but the last one I actually kind of have some personal enjoyment on. But what's really great about this uh, three-parter is that the plot has returned at long last. We are finally getting to the meat and greet of the story. We've had a few filler episodes, a few three-parters here and there, um, but on top of that we've had one of the worst episodes of the show, but we will continue on with the story at long last. So, what is the latest on the storyline, The Hunt for Naraku and The Last Jewel Shark? Well, we actually open up where we left off with, like, the bits with Master Mushin, where, you remember a few episodes back, where a lot of priests are getting murdered by Kagra and this infant. And the infant is trying to seek out a certain MacGuffin, in a way, through priests. So, eventually what happens is, is that, um... The infant uh, finds another priest and tries to kill him. There's a big kind of almost wizard's duel in this episode, which is kind of cool. But then, uh, surprisingly enough, the priest cuts the baby in half. Like, down square in the middle. And I'm like, wow, you just cut a baby in half down the middle. Balls show, balls. You actually have the ability to kill babies. That's, that's, uh... It's pretty disturbing when you think about it, but it turns out, of course, uh, this was part of Naraku's master plan. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Meanwhile, we have our heroes uh, finding a couple villages to stay for the night, but discover the mystery of not just priests getting murdered, which they already know is probably Kagra, but on top of that, uh, the uh, existence of a legendary demon horse known as, I think, uh, Inky or some shit like that? I can't even remember the fucking name of the, um, of the horse. I think it's like Inta or Inka or some shit like that. I'm just calling it Pegasus for right now because it's funny, this horse reminds me of Pegasus from the later seasons of Sailor Moon. So to the point, um, they discover this Pegasus demon uh, might still exist in, uh, in actual uh, feudal Japan. So as they go around to try to figure out what's going on with the dead priests, uh, we actually have it where one Kagura actually meets up with her sister Kana, which we haven't seen for a while, Kana. She's been kind of played off to the sides. A lot of the side villains have. And Kana basically takes one half of the baby uh, to take to, I guess, Naraku, and then the other half, uh, Kagura gets to keep, which you think is kind of weird, right? Why keep half a baby? Like, it's it's dead. You know, just toss it in the river. Do what they did in 300. Toss the, the rejected babies in the big pit. But uh, to the point, the second half of the baby that Kagura has begins to grow much better bigger and a actual full-on form is created in the wake of a child. Now, not an infant child, but like a child who's about maybe 10 years old. Uh, 10 to 11 to 12 years old. You know, the worst kind. Um, we've all dealt with these kids, these little, little pests who think they're better than everybody else when kids go through that stage. But what comes out of it is a fully different serial killer, psychotic child. Like, it makes the good son look like a day in the park, but basically, uh, this time instead of going after priests, now it's beheading demons, and all of this is trying to lead of what's called the border between this world and the next, which is essentially what we're seeking this time around. This could basically be called Indiana Jones and the border between this world and the next. Uh, but in this case, um, as our heroes finally discover this, uh, Inca demon horse and actually do battle with it, it turns out to be a bit more powerful than expected as this legendary creature. And originally one demon did ride this thing into battle to create a hell on earth, and while that's happening, actually comes across Kagura, offers to marry uh, him, and she's like, yeah, fuck that, and takes off, but then at the same time, uh, the, uh, child kills this demon and actually claims the horse, which is interesting. Um, and this child is known as Hakudoshi. Now, Hakudoshi is one of those very fascinating villains of the series. Of course, he is an incarnation of Naraku, but actually plays a bit of a threat to our heroes. Like, 
Unlike Kagura, who started deadly, but then became sort of the Catwoman of the series. And Kana, who's just sort of in the background, and then you have Kohaku, which they do mention as well, like where everybody's at at this point, um, Sando's brother. This time, Hakudoshi is much more of a, like, almost Jeffrey Dahmer serial killer, but, like, imagine Jeffrey Dahmer as, like, a 12-year-old. It's terrifying! And he is cutting demons' heads off left and right and causing a big problem for our heroes. And, of course, Inuyasha's like, you little shit. You, you can tell that he wants to call him a little shit, but they can't say it because of censorship. But to the point, at this point, uh, this demon is, uh, Hakudoshi is cutting heads off demons. We even catch up with, uh... Uh, that pig demon from that one filler episode with the Goku monkey, who is also uh, terrified of this uh, demon Hakudoshi. Uh, so a lot of stuff's happening in this episode, in, in this three-part arc, which I really like. But then we get to the third part, where now we have demons with their heads cut off, wandering the land. And in that sense, we come across a, uh, a little uh, otter demon. Raccoon dog! I'm an otter! Named, uh, I think, Ka Kanta? Yeah, Kanta. And Kanta is basically carrying around the head of his father, and basically uh, wants to restore his father's uh, bot head to the body uh, and bring him back to life. And so he catches up with our heroes and actually befriends Shippo. And actually, believe it or not, Shippo has relevance in this, in this three-parter. Like, Shippo actually is likable here. He's not annoying. He's not a pest. He's not... He's not aggravating. He actually shows some emotions here, which is really cool because he relates to Kanta uh, regarding the death of love of his parents. Because you know, obviously, Shippo's parents were her father was murdered by the Thunder Brothers, and we actually get flashbacks to those episodes, which is really cool. So while all that's happening, they have to basically find uh, the body of uh, Kanta's father which ends up being in a village, getting completely slaughtered by arrows and spears, basically gets the giant treatment from Game of Thrones, and essentially they find the body lifeless, and next to him is obviously, uh, who else but Shishomaru. And you're like, what the hell are you doing here? Shishomaru is actually now curious about this whole mystery about the border between this world and the next, and has actually gone off to um, figure out what that's all about. On top of that, you know, we and, you know obviously leaving Rin and Jockin on their own, but it's the cool scene where we see Rin learning how to make a fire, which, you know, I actually learned how to make fires work uh, in terms of when I go camping because of this episode, in terms of her just, like, slightly blowing on the coals and the hot uh, fissures to get, like, a proper fire going. And they're making cooked mushrooms, which, God, that sounds delicious. Uh, but anyway, so Sashomaru is with this dead body, and everybody's like, oh, God, Sashomaru, did you kill it? Sashomaru's like, no, fuck no, he was just in my way, just walking around. And, obviously, Kanta tries to put the head back on his father's body, um, unsuccessful, and we get this really great emotional sequence where Kanta's crying his heart out, you know, his father's dead, and Shippo can only take sympathy for this. Like, it's really, the music hits home, the animation's gorgeous on these three episodes, mind you. Like, this is where the budget started to show. On top of that, uh, Kagome suggests, hey, Shishomaru, Ten Sega, your sword, doesn't it, is able to, like, save a hundred lives in one swing, much it's like the anti Tetsaga. Oh my god, can you please bring this guy back from the dead? Shishomaru's like, I don't give a fuck. Y'all 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 are on your own. I mean, you gotta deal with this yourself. And then Shippo has a really great scene here, which one probably one of his best probably the best he's had in the show, where he steps in the way of Shishomaru's path and says, Please help my friend. I like I'm begging you here. Like he's on his knees crying, begging, and our heroes can only look at Shippo like, oh my god, this poor guy. Like, even Kagome's there to comfort him. Please help my friend. I'm begging you. And Shishomaru's still like, fuck you, you little shit. I'm out of the way. But then, of course, Tensega starts to pulse, which means, oh, god damn it, Tensega, you want you want me to save that demon. God damn it. Okay, so he, he does the... Th cuts the, the demon, and then, of course, the dad comes back to life. And again, building up with the music, Kara Wada is putting, like, the piano motifs with the music here, and it's really emotional. I haven't heard these themes in a while. Papa! <laughs> Papa! Papa! <laughs> and uh, Kanta's reunited with his father, and the father actually explains where he went in the afterlife. And it's something oddly familiar that even strikes a chord with Shishomaru, who takes off afterwards. He doesn't even bother to stay around for Kagome to say thank you. 
But to the point, um, there's all they have a final goodbye with Kanta and his father, and Shippo obviously uh, is very grateful that he's alive, and the father actually says thanks for saving my life. But Shippo actually gets flashbacks of his father, and even Kagome kind of sees that where it's like, and like even like Shippo slips saying, you know, thanks, thanks, Dad. Sure thing. You take care, Papa. Shippo, he's remembering his father. And it's like, it's a really emotional scene. Like, I'm surprised that finally an episode with Shippo actually gives him some relevance and gives him some heart and something to care about. Because there's times I really don't like this character. But this is a moment where I could say, you know what? That's where the character shines. That's where he's most important. So as our heroes take off uh, for the next arc, which it's kind of funny because I have to kind of split these arcs in, in a few sections because uh, the story at this point goes on for a while and it's hard to fit them all in one episode. But to the point, they figure out what this border between this world and the next could be with the description that Kata's father gave. And Inuyasha's like, you know what guys? I think I've been there before. And even uh, Sango and Muroko are like, really? And then Kagome has the look of, oh yeah, I know exactly where this place is. So the border between this world and the next, where is it exactly? Well, we find out at the very tail end of this episode as our cliffhanger that we're going back to this location. The grave of Inuyasha's father, the place where Tetsaga was buried back in the very first season. And I'm like, this reminds me of Suburban Nights. Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me! It's right back where we started! So I think that's great that we're going back to a location from the first season that you think we were done the quest on. We've gotten the treasure there, but there is more there. And it's going to raise questions like, wait a minute, why didn't they figure out where the sacred jewel shard was before? Why couldn't they sense it prior? It's going to raise some interesting questions that I'm really excited to see where this goes. But overall, this three-parter was pretty damn good. It had great animation. The music was on key. We're introduced to a new villain that actually is really great here in his first introductions. We see some old characters. We uh, have flashbacks to older episodes to catch people up on the plot. This is a very well-structured uh, three-parter for especially those newcomers who are kind of late to the game on the show, but actually are able to catch up with some of the plot points. And also, it makes Shippo interesting. It makes Shippo likable. It doesn't make him annoying. This is one of the better arcs of the season. I actually was very entertained by this. Now, funny enough, I did something interesting. While I own the DVD, while I do own the DVD, which these are kind of poorly made, these cases, because these things have dropped out multiple times. Uh, good news, everybody. It's something that I kind of complained about, I think, prior, is that Netflix, for the longest time, only had the first two seasons and the four movies. Now, thankfully, uh, Netflix has been cooperative that they finally put out uh, the rest of the show. At least up to season six. No season seven, no final act, and yo, no Yashihime. What the hell? Uh, which is kind of weird, but it is cool that they actually finally put out the la later seasons, like seasons three to six. It was very kind of them to do that. I think a lot of fans have been waiting for it to finally be fully binged on Netflix, which is really gr a good job. And watching the Netflix version, something I do notice with it is that they don't have the rights to the opening music, but yet they do for the closing. Um, because the opening music, uh, they just replaced with Carl Wanda's score, which is kind of weird. And also there's no, like, previews for each episode at the beginning and end, which is kind of funky. But I did actually decide to watch it on Netflix to make it easier, because I am simultaneously watching the Skull Island anime and Camp Cretaceous at the same time. So it gives me stuff to juggle with and makes things a tad easier if I just stream it. But overall, this three-part episode I really liked. This is a good... Good 8 out of 10. This is a decent arc, and I'm looking forward to see what happens in the next chapter and where we go from here. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments section below, this arc. Don't forget to support our Patreon. Just a dollar more will get you early access to all of our content as well as other special features. I'm actually shooting this prior to making a trip to the Toronto Zoo because we're going to be filming some episodes there. I just want to get this filming over with, and when I come back, I'll edit this and have it out uh, for this week. But yeah, tune in next time when we take a look at the next story arc. So until the next video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Film signing off saying, if you're writing a character like Shippo-esque,
set this arc as a prime example of how to write it well, and don't make him annoying. That's all I got this week. I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.